in your own words, can you explain what is happening in Armenia? And then, um, yeah, if you could break it down for us, that'd be great. Sure. Um, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you um, for having me here. So basically, it's very hard to put it in short terms. Um, you can definitely look up a lot of the history, but just to break it down for, for these purposes, um, Armenia is currently surrounded, it's landlocked by um, different countries. It's, 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 it's in the Caucasus region and attached to it, with it, and a part of it has always been an area called um, Nagorno-Karabakh or Artakh, historically known as Artakh. And this Artakh region, back when communism first kind of took over Armenia, back when the other country in question, which I'm sure we'll be talking about, Azerbaijan, when it pretty much became a country. Um, during those times, when Soviets took over, they to we like to think that it was to appease the Turks for whatever reason. But Joseph Stalin and which was at the time over 90% populated by Armenians, as it has historically been populated by Armenians, and handed that land over to the Azeris. And it became a part of Azerbaijan. However, when uh, communism fell apart, the um, people living in Artsakh, I'm gonna call it Artsakh for our intensive purposes, uh, but um, the people living there essentially uh, wanted their own autonomy. And there were a lot of issues with that with Azerbaijan. Ultimately, there was a war back in 1990, 1991 or so, in the early 90s. And what ended up happening was the Armenians did win that war and they did uh, regain that land. And uh, as a result, or in following that, was a peace or a ceasefire that was established by what we have now known as the OSC, the Minsk Group. And that's M-I-N-S-K, if you ever want to look it up. And that is mostly comprised of the United States, and there's Russia, and there's France. There are some other countries, I believe, but those are the three main ones that started it. They established the ceasefire, and what ended up happening was just a lot of tensions between the countries. Azerbaijan seems to have this interesting... Um, feeling of ownership over the land, which was never really theirs to begin with. So to put it bluntly, it's like, if I take something away from you and you come back and get it back from me, I get mad at you because you took back something that was never, you know, really mine to begin with. And it was always yours. So it's kind of that basic concept here. And so that's what's been going on. And, and a lot of it is probably fueled by a lot of um, a lack of proper education when it comes to history because when you hear the Azeri people talk about this um, they're like have you read history books did you know and and it's funny to me because Armenians have been around for thousands and thousands of years a, a long long time ago and Azerbaijan just barely formed as a country like Coca-Cola is older than they are so it's just it just is the way it is you know it, it's hard when you have somebody that just won't acknowledge history and and that's essentially one of the reasons that we we're having this conflict and there have been several um ceasefire violations and what's going on now is that due to their not only ceasefire violation but uh just a very aggressive attack on armenians that are living in artsakh right now armenia has pretty much has been pulled into a war because it it has to defend itself obviously you know because um, if it didn't right now it would be completely taken over by Azeris and or Turks so the difference between what makes today or this war more severe and different than the others is the x factor that I call it and that's Turkey so just like a two second background on that. And because I'm sure if you go to Fresno State, there's a, a mon monument at Fresno State for the um, 1.5 million Armenians that were killed during the Armenian genocide perpetrated by Turks. Turkey till this day denies it. However, interestingly enough, now for some whatever reason, they've taken a very active part in joining Azerbaijan, fueling Azerbaijan to continue with their efforts to try to, for some reason, regain their territory. So. Artsakh itself is an autonomous region and has always hoped to become its own uh, recognized country because I think then, then it will be able to be more self-determinant and 
we won't have this Azeri Armenian conflict in between where they're looking to the Armenians to protect them and help them, but then there's Azerbaijan feeling entitled to it. So it's it's pretty it's pretty complicated, but for the most part, it's a very it's be, it's been a very aggressive war and 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 a lot of a lot of issues that um, equate to war crimes, you know, that are being perpetrated right now, not just a flat out war. So. But I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in as, as, as I know you have other questions, but that's kind of the background. So I hope that kind of that covers was good. It. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Yeah, it, I try. <laughs> it gives me a, enough to like look into and um, thank you for mm -hmm. connecting it back to Fresno State and the art piece that is there because I'm going to tie that into my story. I didn't even think of that. Um, yeah, and absolutely. also, so locally, um, mm -hmm. why should people care? So why should people be getting active in this issue locally? Well, locally, sorry, I'm having, my hair has been like this all week. Um, well, I think that we need to care as, uh, on terms of humanity, it really just how, how, I mean, we're in 2020 right now, and there are still crimes against humanity, you know, happening right now, right in front of our eyes. And why should people care about any war crimes that are happening? And, and the reason I say war crimes is that if you're going to be attacking a country because of your issues and, you know, whatever disagreements you have or whatever entitlements you may feel that you have, things change when you, when you turn to war crimes, which, and I'll define that, they started shelling um, the uh, capital and, and, and civilian, I should say, civilian civilians and civilian infrastructures, instead of only attacking, say, military posts or whatever, you know, they started doing this with, with civilians. And so that's already in and of itself, by definition, a war crime. So not only that, they, uh, Turkey has now, which they've done in the past, and they have denied this before, but, but they have actually hired mercenaries, uh, jihadists, mercenaries to do some of this work on the Azeri border. And there's another story that goes with that too, that, that we've been just reading about. We have recordings over, we have pictures and recordings and videos of these um, same jihadists actually saying that they were tricked by Turkey. Now, mind you, no jihadists. Now, these are these jihadists and mercenaries are essentially what we all know as terrorists. So, you know, when you get that kind of feeling, when you think of 9-11 or when you think of San Bernardino or when you think of the Miami shooting, I mean, um, any any terror crime, these are the same type of people, the same people probably. And Turkey has now hired them and sent them over to the Azeri border and for them to just have their way with the Armenians to help them fight. And so what kind of country, now mind you, um, Turkey is a NATO country, uh, deals with war criminals, deals with mercenaries. It's just, it's very, you know, it's, it's, it's insane. And again, the crimes that are being perpetrated are against civilians, innocent people that are living in the area. It's their home. They're being driven out essentially just to try and survive. Obviously they're going towards Armenia where it's safe. And so the Armenian, you know, the Artsakh army are now currently trying to defend the, the land. And so why should people care? It's because this is a humanity issue. This is whatever background, whatever country you're from, and maybe you were just born in the United States and that's fine. And think of it as that too. So what if somebody just came over, I don't know, I'll just make an extreme example of safe. The Chinese came one day and just try to take over our land. They came and tried to take over Fresno your home, your house, your well-being, they shelled and, and bombed at you. Wouldn't you expect now, the United States has such a big army and, and, and we have so much more in terms of resources and money, but wouldn't you want something to be done? Wouldn't you want the world to at least acknowledge and, and join in forces and say, hey, you better stop this, right? Well, Armenia is a tiny country. And as I mentioned before, it's landlocked um, in, a, in a very tight spot and it's between enemy number one and enemy number two. So if you were to look at the map of um, Armenia, it would be Armenia. To the east of it is, uh, is Azerbaijan. To the west of it is Turkey. And Azerbaijan has 10 million population, while Turkey has 80 million population. Armenia only has a 3 million population. So you have essentially, um, gosh, you know, 90 million, almost 100 million people against a 3 million population. 
uh, mind you, they have access to the sea, they have access to trade, they have access to oil and gas and energy and all these things that, you know, and allies and power that Armenia maybe doesn't. So we in our own nation have, have been out on the streets as we recently saw, um, you know, with the protests, the recent protests, uh, fighting for the rights of minority people, people who are pressured, people who are, you know, maybe don't have the same power and, you know, or whatever it may be, you know, it's, it's different levels of it. But Armenia is, is also one of those people, you know, I mean, we're, we're having all this conflict going on down there with, with hardly any help, hardly any support. And, you know, so that we, we should care as humans, you know, to watch other innocent humans die. And, and not just in Armenia, but in any country, I think we should be quick to stand up. But unfortunately, uh, this is something that if we don't care about now, this is something that's going to continue by Turkey. Um, and it could be somebody else tomorrow. You know, we should care because, I mean, I mean, America is the land of the free. I mean, we fight for what's right. Right. I mean, we we fight for freedom. We fight for human rights. We fight for equality. That's what we stand for. So Americans should be following that and 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 standing up for people who, who right now are in desperate need. And and the thing about it is that we have to be so careful. And that's why I appreciate the invite here is that a lot of the country or excuse me, a lot of the press out there that does discuss this issue. If they happen to interview an Azeri or a Turk, they will use a flip narrative and they'll say they are, that Armenia was the aggressor. And when you look at it in a just a commonsensical way, um, I don't think that it would be in Armenia's best interest to stir up a war with a country that's, you know, as big as Azerbaijan. Mind you, we will we will defend our country and do what's necessary. But, you know, why would we start a war? We already are in the area we occupy. We have occupied the area. There are Armenians living in it. I have personally been a part of a nonprofit organization that actually helps raise money to better the war-torn areas. So we've helped build schools and churches back up and and hospitals and, and roads and things like that that were destroyed during the initial war in the 90s. And here you are, like, what reason do we have to aggress? Like, it just makes no sense, even in just, just simple terms, but they do this flip narrative. And in the meantime, all the damage continues to be done. So we should care on a humanitarian level. We should care as people and, and based on the very principles and the, and, and the very thing that America is built off of, you know, or, or so we hope, we, we hope that we don't lose sight of that ever, you know, and stop, start becoming careless because then that's when we lose our, our souls. That's when we start losing our hearts you know so yeah this is an innocent people that are just being attacked randomly and and killed and i mean you hear about soldiers that are being skinned and and cut into you know smaller parts like it's it's this is a different level of violence it's a different level of hate and it needs to stop so yeah that's why and what can um people here locally do to get involved and help well, and that's a great question. Um, it's what the uh, all of the Armenians have kind of started doing, and we've had a lot of uh, non-Armenian support as well, people of different races and nationalities coming forward, um, writing to lawmakers, uh, condemning this, um, educating themselves about this thing, and, and really standing up. When we have Armenians marching on the streets, it would be wonderful to see other people who are not just on the side of Armenia, but on the side of humanity, on the side of justice, to to stand out there with them because we're now defending justice. That's what this is. This is all to get justice, not just siding with this country or that country. You know, it's, it's plain and simple. They were the aggressors. Armenia is defending itself. We're in a very difficult situation. Yes, we're fighting back, but it's, it's really, really hard. And when you have the bigger superpowers that don't really say anything, including the United States, I mean, if you just go on your phone right now and you look at like the top news, even on, I've, te I've tested this with Yahoo, with Apple News, you don't even see a trace of that. So people don't even know about it. You know, and so I blame, you know, the media for that. And I don't know if it's political or what, but these bigger superpowers that really should be doing something, mind you, they were a part of the Minsk group, you know, they should be very actively pursuing peace. And yet very, sorry, my dogs, there, there's very little action being done. So I believe that when the 
people of the United States stand up and say, hey, you know what? This is not cool. Americans are not okay with it. We're not okay with innocent people dying and war crimes and you guys dealing with, you know, us being friends with someone who's a terrorist, not placing sanctions on them, not doing any of that. That's when, you know, our politicians will maybe start to listen. Mind you, quite a bit of them are already on board, but, you know, there there's definitely more that needs to be done because, like, as we know it, and I know Donald Trump is just now getting better and healing from his um, COVID-19 uh, diagnosis. We're glad he's okay, but, you know, something needs to be said. There was literally just one sentence said about it during a, a press conference uh, that when he was actually directly asked about it. So, oh, we're going to try to take care of that. You know, we're going to try to de-escalate if we can. I mean, are there maybe some biases? Are there business um, agreements between them? Are there, you know, I mean, America has a lot of ties in Turkey, um, you know, military bases. So it makes things a little more complicated. But at the, at the end of the day, no matter where you are, where you stand, and if you know that your friend is a war criminal, if you know that your friend is dealing with terrorists, if you know that your friend is doing something wrong, you need to step up and stop your friend. You know, you need to make it known that you're not going to stand by that because if we don't, then we are just as complicit as they are. So that's how I look at it anyway. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And then last question, is there anything that you want um, the people who are listening to this interview or anybody who might watch this to know? Mm -hmm. um, whatever you hear out there, do not ever believe that the Armenians would ever be the aggressors. That's number one. Um, number one, because they... I don't understand it. Like it makes no sense to me, but that's just what they've done. That's what they like to do. Initially, they were trying to say that we had something to do with jihadists. Like Armenians are the first Christian nation um, in the world. So dating back to 300 um, AD. So it's like, that would already be a religious conflict, you know, but I would just want people to to really look at history, to really understand it, to join the Armenian cause if you can, you know, um, there are donations, you know, monetary or even supplies that we are um, collecting right now. And I know it's kind of a tough time for people, but if you're able to donate, if this is something that's close to your heart, then um, Armenia Fund is a very, is, is the um, organization that's been um, asked by the Armenian government to, to help with humanitarian aid. You know, a lot of families are being displaced right now, a lot going on over there with the war. And just if you have, you know, access, or if you see Armenians on the streets, go stand next to them, you know, um, write your lawmakers, um, guys. I mean, and make sure that, that these war crimes are actually punished. That's the thing is, is it's important that these, these crimes don't go unpunished because it may be us today, but it's going to be somebody else tomorrow. You know, on the world stage, when you see somebody getting away with something like this, you're going to see others start to do it too, because the superpowers are standing kind of quietly, just waiting to see what happens. Um, essentially, and what I was saying earlier before, um, if you're safe from Mexico, um, if you were to hear about your homeland being taken over by a completely other country, how would you feel? That is exactly what the Armenians are grappling with right now. And we're fighting it. We're trying to support our country right now so that we can't fight back. But essentially, that's what we're dealing with. This is an existential war. And no such war should be happening in 2020 in the age of technology and so much history behind us that we should be learning from. And yet, crimes still occur every day. So... If we're not going to stand for crime here in the United States, uh, you know, against innocent people or minorities, then we shouldn't stand for it in any other part of the world. So um, you can always research, but just make sure you're reading credible sites and, and find out for yourself, you know, um, but you're going to find a lot of holes in their stories. So pay close attention, not just Armenia, but around the world, Americans have to be that beacon we have to set that example we are a superpower and we have to show that you know we haven't forgotten what we stand for as a people as a nation so um and i would like to tell everybody to stay healthy and be well and um to send up some prayers for us because we need them right now but aside from that just some action you know um again just writing some lawmakers if you can help maybe donate to armenia fund it's f-u-n-d um, that's a website, you know, you can go to um, cleared by the 
um, Armenian government and requested by them for some humanitarian aid for us. Um, that's it. And just uh, keep us in, our, in your hearts and your prayers. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for taking out time of your busy schedule. That's I okay. Know you're busy. This is, this um, is just as, as, a, as much a priority as anything else. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you again. 